Have you ever wondered, who are the four people that Allah won't forgive? This question is not merely thought-provoking, but it also serves as a mirror for us to reflect upon the state of our own faith and actions. Forgiveness is a cornerstone in Islam, an act of mercy extended from the most merciful himself, Allah. In Islam, Allah's mercy is boundless, a sea of compassion that embraces all. It is this mercy that we seek when we stumble and fall in our journey of faith. It is this mercy that gives us hope to rise and rectify our wrongs. But while Allah's mercy is infinite, there are certain actions, certain behaviors that can stand as barriers between us and this divine forgiveness. Today, we are going to explore this profound topic. We will discuss the four types of individuals who, according to Islamic teachings, are denied Allah's forgiveness. This discussion is not meant to frighten, but rather to enlighten, to guide us towards the path of righteousness and away from actions that may lead us astray. Understanding these unforgivable actions is vital. It shapes our moral compass, steering us clear of behaviors that displease Allah. It helps us to cultivate a stronger, more mindful connection with our faith. It serves as a reminder of the importance of living righteously, of seeking Allah's pleasure above all else. So, who are these four individuals who are denied Allah's mercy? What actions have they committed to warrant such a grave consequence? And most importantly, how can we ensure we do not tread the same path? These are the questions that we will explore in our discussion. As we embark on this journey of understanding, let us approach it with open hearts and minds. Let us seek knowledge for the betterment of our faith and our lives. Let us strive to be among those who are showered with Allah's mercy and are saved from his wrath. So without further ado, let us delve into the first of these four persons who won't be forgiven. The first person is the one who is ungrateful and does not appreciate Allah's blessings. In the realm of Islam, gratitude lies at the very core of our spiritual journey. It is the cornerstone of our faith and the bedrock of our relationship with Allah. Now, one might wonder, what does it mean to be ungrateful to Allah's blessings? Well, being ungrateful, in its simplest form, is failing to acknowledge and appreciate the blessings bestowed upon us by Allah. It could be as subtle as taking for granted the air we breathe, the water we drink, or the food we eat. It could also manifest in more conspicuous manners, such as disregarding the love of our family, the support of our friends, or the opportunities life presents us with. Moreover, ungratefulness is not merely the absence of thankfulness. It's an attitude, a perspective that overlooks the good, and focuses solely on the negatives. It's the voice that says, I don't have enough, despite being surrounded by abundance. It's the mindset that always wants more, never satisfied, never content. Now let's delve into the consequences of being ungrateful. According to Islamic teachings, ingratitude towards Allah's blessings is a grave sin. It stands as a barrier between the individual and Allah, hindering spiritual growth and progression. It clouds the heart, distorts the mind, and veils the soul from the radiant light of Allah's mercy and love. In a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, He who does not thank people, does not thank Allah. This powerful statement underscores the importance of gratitude not only towards Allah, but also towards his creation. So, let's reflect on our own attitudes and behaviors. Do we truly appreciate what we have, or are we constantly yearning for more? Do we thank Allah for his countless blessings, or do we take them for granted? Remember, gratitude is not just about saying Alhamdulillah, it's about feeling it in our hearts, showing it in our actions, and living it in our lives. This brings us to the second person who won't be forgiven. The second person is he who persistently commits sins without seeking Allah's forgiveness. To understand why this person won't be forgiven, we first need to delve into the concept of sin and repentance in Islam. A sin, or haram, refers to an act that goes against the teachings of Islam. It's a transgression against the divine will of Allah. But Islam is also a religion of mercy and forgiveness, and thus, it emphasizes the importance of repentance, or tawbah. So, what does it mean to persistently commit sins without seeking forgiveness? It's not about making a mistake once, twice, or even thrice. It's about repeatedly indulging in sinful behavior without any remorse. It's about knowing what you're doing is wrong, but carrying on regardless without a second thought to the consequences or the divine laws you're breaking. Imagine a person who consistently lies to others, knowing full well that lying is forbidden in Islam, or someone who constantly gossips, disregarding the teaching that gossiping is a major sin. 
These individuals know the gravity of their actions, yet they continue on their path without seeking Allah's forgiveness. But why is this so significant? Why would such a person not be forgiven? In Islam, seeking forgiveness is not just about saying, I'm sorry. It's about feeling genuine remorse for your actions, making amends where possible, and making a sincere effort not to repeat the same mistakes. It's about turning back to Allah, acknowledging your wrongdoings, and seeking His mercy. However, a persistent sinner who fails to seek forgiveness is like a person who refuses to acknowledge their mistakes. They are not willing to make amends or change their ways. They live in a state of denial, refusing to accept their wrongdoings and not seeking Allah's mercy. The consequences of persistent sinning, according to Islamic teachings, are severe. Not only does it lead to a hardening of the heart and a distancing from Allah, but it also leads to a life devoid of Allah's blessings and mercy. Now let's move on to the third person who won't be forgiven. The third person is he who doubts the existence of Allah and his power. In the realm of faith, doubt can sometimes creep in like a shadow, uninvited and unsettling. In Islam, faith is central. It's the very cornerstone of a Muslim's life. It's like a mighty tree deeply rooted in the heart, its branches reaching out to all aspects of life. But what happens when this tree is shaken? What does it mean to doubt Allah's existence and power? To doubt Allah's existence is to challenge the very core of Islamic belief. It's like saying the sun doesn't rise, that the moon doesn't glow, that the stars don't twinkle. It's questioning the undeniable, the self-evident truth of our universe. Allah's existence is evident in every sunrise, every blooming flower, every newborn's cry. His power is manifest in the changing seasons, the flowing rivers, the towering mountains, and the vastness of the cosmos. Doubting Allah's power, on the other hand, is to question His infinite capabilities, to limit His boundless authority. It's like saying the ocean can't roar, that the wind can't howl, that the earth can't quake. It's undermining the omnipotence of the one who set the planets in motion, who commands life and death, who created everything from nothing. The fourth person is he who disrespects his parents. In the world of Islam, honoring one's parents is seen as a fundamental duty, a cornerstone of moral conduct. The respect and reverence for parents is a thread that weaves through the Quran and Hadith, the foundational texts of Islam. Disrespecting parents, then, is viewed as a serious transgression. But what does it mean to disrespect one's parents? It could be as overt as arguing with them, ignoring their advice or treating them with contempt. It might also be more subtle, like failing to show appreciation for their sacrifices, neglecting their needs or not seeking their blessing in important life decisions. In the Hadith, Prophet Muhammad is quoted saying, May his nose be rubbed in the dust, a man in whose presence his parents, or one of them, attain old age, and he does not enter paradise by serving them. This strong language underscores the gravity of the sin of disrespecting one's parents in Islam. The Quran also speaks explicitly about the importance of kindness towards parents. In Surah Al-Isra it says, Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of contempt, nor repel them, but address them in terms of honor. The consequences of disrespecting parents are severe according to Islamic teachings. It is seen as an affront to Allah, and a person who disrespects their parents is considered to be on a path away from righteousness. It's a path that could lead to a life without Allah's blessings and forgiveness. In conclusion, these are the four persons who, according to Islamic teachings, Allah won't forgive. The ungrateful, the persistent sinner, the doubter, and the disrespectful towards parents. It's important to remember these four categories as they serve as a warning for us. We've delved into the unforgivable, the ungrateful, the persistent sinner, and the doubter. Each of these characters illustrates behaviors that can lead us astray from the path of righteousness. Let's revisit briefly. The unforgivable refuses to seek Allah's mercy, while the ungrateful overlooks the blessings bestowed upon them. The persistent sinner continues to err without repentance, and the doubter questions the very essence of faith. In each of these instances, the underlying themes are gratitude, repentance, faith, and respect. These are the pillars upon which we should build our lives. It's a call for us to reflect on our own behaviors and attitudes. Are we showing enough gratitude? Are we repentant? Is our faith strong? 
May we all strive to be better and seek Allah's forgiveness. Thank you for watching and reflecting with us today. Be sure to give a like to the video and to get more Islamic videos regularly, subscribe to our Islamic channel and press the bell icon next to it.